Hi, this is Mike at the 6th Street Massacre Haunted House, and today we're going to install a prop that we bought. And um, yeah, you can, we, we make a lot of our props, but a lot of the stuff we just buy and it's ready to go. But it's the most important part is, is where you put it and how you place it. And for many reasons, to get the best scare, because it's a haunted house. But before that, you're thinking about safety, so you're not, if it's an action prop, like a lot of our props are, they could drop down and hurt somebody. And you also want to think about uh, the longevity of the prop. You want it to last. So you want it to be where it's inaccessible as much as you can, uh, so all the troublemakers don't get to uh, cause trouble. And, um, and so it doesn't hit them. And so sometimes uh, you can avoid the hitting part. And sometimes if it's a troublemaker, they may uh, get in the way because they had to make an effort to do that. But we try to make it as hard as possible. So we're going to talk about how to place this one. I'll just kind of show you. Uh, we got this from poisonprops.com. It's a brand new prop. And, and it's a scary prop. And what makes it even more scary is the product placement. I'm just going to give you an idea. This mounts on the wall. This comes up. It's powered by air. So it's, it's a pneumatic prop. It's got a sensor that senses it. You got to make sure you put the sensor in the right place so it triggers at the right time. Uh, so to get the, so you have the timings right, the placement is right for safety and for scare. And now we're going to talk about how we want to place this prop. We're in the clown room right now, so everything in here is clown related. So we'll kind of talk about Rick's doing a repair over here. This is just some basic fabric that we have on the wall. But one of the beginner mistakes that we even made back in the day was stapling things like this up. And it was early on where some of this might fall and one of those staples sticking out. We had to have a customer got stitches because they walked by it and it just, and it got them like a knife. So what we're using here, you can see it's 3M, uh, quick bond spray adhesive and it's, and it's all about safety because now we just spray that on there and then just push it on and it, it'll stay there for quite a while and it's way less dangerous than dealing with a, uh, a staple. Never use staples in a customer environment. Even if you did, said well we're going to put it up high, we're going to staple it up high, well what happens when that fabric drops and the staple's still hanging there and now it's sitting here at eye level and the staple's still in it. Yes, sir. So it's gonna cut you. Some of the basic, that's some basic safety stuff that can save you on a claim from a customer or an injury of uh, even some of your own people. Staples are just not a good permanent solution for anything that's in, in the production uh, environment where you know, all bets are off. You never know what the customer is gonna do. So you know, behind the scenes, a different story because you have more control over that environment, but you have no, it, you have limited control when they're in the production area, like when it's where the customers walk. Looks like magic. So it'll probably be good for a couple more years of that. Nice. We're still talking about the clown dropper flailer from Poison Props. This is, uh, the, this is the area where we're going to install it. And we're talking about product placement. So it's a surprise, it's safe, and then it's safe for the prop. So we can keep it around for a few years. All props don't have to be scary. In fact, you want to have some space in between to get people to lower their guards so you can pop them. And so you can see right here to my right, uh, there's a static prop here. So everybody's walking around, they're enjoying, you know, just the the paint that we splashed on the wall, the UV paint, uh, and, and he pops a little bit, got the bright black light on him. And so everybody's looking at that stuff. So if you'll follow me with the camera, you'll see when, once you turn this corner, this is where <laughs> the clown dropper flailer from Poison Props. We're gonna most likely put a drop panel in so it still looks like a wall, and then we're gonna have that the wall drop at the same time the prop's going to come down on the other side of that wall and scare the bejesus out of whoever's here. And then we're going to have to come up with a way to make it less convenient for somebody to reach in there and mess with that prop. 
So we're gonna think about that. We're probably gonna make this a little wider to, to accommodate that and then put some things in place. We might even put some bars in uh, to where it's, the window has bars on it. And we may just go with bars instead of the, the drop panel. So, so it's bars, we have some other windows in here and people don't seem to react that much to it. And we could put a curtain behind it to make it black out, make the curtain open for it to drop. We'll figure something out. We just want it to be a surprise. We want to make the wall as least noticeable as possible, but we want to get to where the, the as soon as the customer turns this corner, and we might want to get the second person. So we'll talk about timing, um, how we time the props. And we have a lot of people that work in this room, so sometimes we make our, our props to where the, the actors can trigger the props instead of automation. So that way they can kind of have some fun with it. Nice, nice. We'll, get, it, we'll get into more of that later. Because it's about not how much the prop is. It, you can have the most expensive prop in the world, but placement is key, correct? Yeah, it's, it, you, it really is. Like Placement's probably as important or even more important than the prop. Because if, if the prop is not placed in the right place to make it a surprise, it's almost worthless. So now, now it's just a cool prop. There you go. So, and we don't want to, we can't cool people. Learned that a long time ago in the, in the haunted house business. It has to be a verb. Cool is not a verb. We have to verb people, scare them, <laughs> make them scream, make them laugh, some kind of emotion. Cool is not an emotion. Nice. nice. We'll be back later when we start building on this and get a little bit more planning done. And we'll, we'll continue this video at that point.